This is an overview of the various transceiver modules, also known as radio modules, compatible with the Motino boards. The term transceiver means the module hardware consists of both a radio receiver and a transmitter. So like any other transceiver, these modules can either transmit or receive wireless signals, but not both at the same time. Also, it's important to note these are not 2.4 GHz or Wi-Fi, but are sub GHz modules intended to be used on your region's ISM bands. These are great for very long battery life operation and are much longer range and much lower power than regular Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Over here we have the LoRa RFM95W and RFM96W transceivers. These two modules use the same exact transceiver chip, this is the black part here, and this is marked with RF96. But these are tuned to different frequencies. In fact, it's these passive component sections that determine their intended frequency bands of operation. The passive components are used to filter and attenuate all unwanted frequencies and allow only the marked frequency bands. The module frequencies are marked on the bottom and also have these colored dots to help identify the frequencies. The RFM95 has the silver dot, which indicates this is good for 868 to 915 MHz, and the RFM96 has this gold dot, indicating this is the 433 MHz module. While the modules look almost identical, you can tell them apart by these black little parts here. And on the RFM95W, these are further apart from each other, and on the RFM96W, these are closer together. Again, do not be confused by the RF96 marker on these chips, which is the same on both of these modules. And it's the color marker which helps you identify what frequency band these should be used at. Next we have the RFM69 HCW modules. This is the 868 to 915 MHz version, also indicated by that silver dot. And this is the 433 MHz version, indicated by the gold dot. These also use an identical transceiver chip, and this is marked by RF69. And again, it's their passive component sections that determine their intended frequency of use. Finally, we have the RFM69CW, which is a lower power version of the RFM69HCW. Notice these have far fewer components than their HCW counterparts. And again, since they're so similar to each other, the silver and gold dots indicate their frequency bands. One important aspect of the LoRa RFM95 and 96 and the RFM69HCW radios is that they're pin compatible with each other, so they can mount on the same SMD footprint. On the other hand, the RFM69CW only have seven pads on each side, as opposed to eight pads on these radios, so the CW radios are not compatible with the HCW or the LoRa radios. For this reason, all of these AVR Motinos have two sets of pads, so they accept all of the radios. The Motino M0 only has one set of pads, and this only accepts the LoRa and the HCW radios. However, there's the possibility of using this adapter board with the Motino M0, and this mounts directly on the bottom of the PCB, and you can use the RFM69CW radio with the Motino M0 if that's really a requirement. Since it's only the RFM69HCW, which are PIM compatible with the LoRa modules, it's generally recommended to use RFM69 HCW in new designs and avoid the CW variants unless you have a very specific need for that lower transmit power variant. I'd like to point out that Motinos have mounting pads only for the used radio pins and all the other pins are left unconnected. And if you have a specific need to use those pins in your application you can easily solder a wire from that specific pin to a Motino GPIO pin. It's worth mentioning these older RFM69HW and RFM69W modules, which are larger, and while they're also compatible with all the other RFM69 radios, they're no longer supported and no longer recommended for new designs. As far as transmitting and receiving, all the RFM69 radios can talk to each other as long as they have the same frequency and settings in software. It's important to match the software frequency setting with the intended hardware frequency. The RFM69 modules are FSK modulation 
and are not compatible with the LoRa modulation of the RFM95 or 96 radios. Here's an example of a radio module that's already soldered to a Motino. It's very important to mount them correctly oriented or they will not work at all and can be damaged once power is applied to the Motino. Notice that for CW radios they will have to be mounted on these upper sets of pads along with these pads rather than these bottom sets of pads for the HCW and the LoRa radios. Also be careful not to make bridges between pads when you solder or the module can be damaged or it will not work at all. I will now show you how I solder a module to a Motino. You could use helping hands or even tape to hold the parts together but I got used to just using a finger to hold them tight while I solder the first pad. So get your solder ready, clean your iron tip, next up position the module and make sure it's oriented correctly and then proceed to soldering the, your first pad. Once that is secure, you can proceed to soldering the rest of the pads. Notice I don't spend a lot of time and I only heat up the pads enough to make their solder reflow. Otherwise I could damage these pads. There it is. Now let's repeat this for a LoRa module on a Motino Mega. Again, position your module, hold it down flat to the PCB, and solder that first pad. That's going to secure the module so it doesn't move, and you can proceed to soldering the rest of the pads. Sometimes when there's a ground pad, it might take a little bit longer to heat it up to make the solder reflow to it just because there's more thermal mass and it's attached to the overall ground plane of the board and that's going to absorb heat very quickly. So depending on how good your soldering iron is it might take a little bit longer to heat that up. And here it is. Once a module is mounted on Motino it's really important to ensure that you have a properly matched antenna solder to the antenna port before you use the modules. If no antenna is attached, internal reflections of the transmit signal can heat up the transmitter and damage it after extensive use. Also, an antenna that is not the right length or one that is damaged or corroded will require higher transmit power than is really needed to get a packet across the same distance. So for optimal operation and efficiency, make sure that you have an antenna that's well matched to the module's frequency. When you order Motinos from Low Power Lab, you receive a free monopole wire antenna, which is cheap and very effective and can easily get a signal across a mile or even more in open air. The length is trimmed to match the frequency of the Motinos transceiver, which you order. If you order a Motino with an 868 to 915 MHz module like this one, you'll receive a shorter antenna. And if you order the 433 MHz radios, you'll receive a longer wire antenna. Here's a quick demo of soldering the wire monopole antenna to a Motino with a transceiver. You can solder it above the PCB at the antenna port right here, that's probably most common. And you can also solder it below the PCB at the same spot. And this just depends on how it's convenient for your project. So the first step would be to remove about a millimeter of that insulation from the wire. And then apply some flux to make it easy for solder to reflow. And then Tin your soldering iron with a little bit of solder. Get the antenna next to the antenna port and apply a little heat just enough to make solder reflow. That's it. These monopole antennas are most efficient when they're used perpendicular to the PCB's ground plane, which in very simple terms acts as a launch pad for the signal propagation. As you bend and twist and distort this antenna, you will start losing signal strength, so in ideal conditions, you would want to keep this monopole straight. Whether it's soldered on the bottom side or on the top side, it should be straight and perpendicular to the PCB. There are other different types of antennas available as well. We have this helical antenna, which is very compact and still a good performer. 
So you could mount that to the antenna pad like that. Or if you want to trim that right angle end of it, you could also mount it straight up like this or straight down like that. We also now have a high performance dipole and this can mount to any Motino using some RF coax cables and an SMA connector. And any Motino will accept an SMA connector like this. Finally, I'd like to mention the Trace Antenna Motinos, which come with an integrated 868 to 915 MHz PCB Trace Antenna. So you don't need to solder a separate antenna to these Motinos. When in doubt, you can pick up one of these and be sure that they will perform very decently. On the software side, all these settings are very important to match up between your modules for a successful radio link. But there's one very important setting that is often misused or misunderstood. Because the RFM69 modules come in different output power variants, the RFM69 library needs to know which one you have, so it knows how to configure them for proper transmission output. It's very important to tell the library when you have an HCW or an HW module. The various examples in the library illustrate how this is done. So here we have the node sketch example, and right here in the define section there is this is RFM69 HW or HCW definition. This needs to be enabled when you have an HW or an HCW radio module on your Motino. And it needs to be commented out like that if you have a CW or W RFM69. Otherwise, if this setting is mismatched with the hardware, there will be effectively no range. I hope this was a helpful intro to the various sub gigahertz radio modules, antennas, and how you can use them with the Motino boards. There's a lot more to see at lowpowerlab.com and you can find an RF best practices guide on our site which will help you better understand the basics of wireless transmissions. There's also a lot more in-depth discussion, sample code and various projects in the Low Power Lab forum which explore the many capabilities of these transceivers. Be sure to check that out as well. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and thanks for watching.